Hello, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your Cedar Creek Silverback 35 QB4 fifth wheel. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking. All right, on this one, you've got a lot of slides. So leave plenty of room for your slide on your campsite as well as your door to open up on your uh, outdoor kitchen out there. Plus, you've got this huge awning. On your off camp side, of course, besides your slides, I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Everything's toward the front of your unit. Conveniently, power, water connections. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we do is level our unit. Inside this access panel is your stabilizing landing leg control. You're just going to retract to bring down, extend to raise. Do that until you've got your unit level. Once you are level, we're going to come to the back here and we're going to extend these landing legs here in the rear. Our stabilizing jacks here. We're going to hit extend. So run these down. I am going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads will protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, and hot black top in the summer. Get a four pack of those from the store with your 10% off coupon. Have them in the back here. Put them down underneath these stabilizing jacks. Now remember, we've moved our landing legs until we're level. Now we're just stabilizing. So we're only going to bring these down until they are taut. Keep these bolts nice and loose here. That way you can bring these legs down nice and easy for you. And again, we can only extend these down just till it feels like it's going to start lifting the unit. You don't want to change our levelness. We just want to get it stabilized. Get out, get them down, get our unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. Big, long 50 amp cord. Plugs in up here in the front. Goes in here, locks on, locks on by turning to the right. Now at the end of your 50 amp cord, in your convenience pack will be a 50 a 30 amp reducer and it'll also be a 30 to 15 amp right here in case you need to plug into a 110 throw that on the end there get your power hooked up let's do your water all right so our docking station is inside this front storage area here we are going to come here for our campsites we are going to turn this to city water then we're going to grab a water pressure regulator this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure 40 to 50 psi, protecting lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Hook that up here, right where it says fresh water, but it's also city water. Make sure that's not city. Don't turn that hose on yet. One more step. Find your hot water heater here. Let's open this up. And make sure your drain plug's back in. Throw some plumber's tape around that, not putty. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn the hose on. After your hose has been out for a few minutes, we're gonna go inside the unit and open up our slides. I want you to open up your slides because I need you to get in there and open up all of your water lines. Turn all of them on. Get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water. Then you know you're all set up to camp. Now let's say we're gonna go dry camping. In that case, we're going to switch this down to what they call gravity fill. Fill it in the same spot. Again, treat your hot water heater the same way. Um, but now what I want you to do is go inside and watch the levels of your fresh water tank. Where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Once that's full, remove that hose. And then whenever you want to utilize that fresh water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump and hook to city water. That's already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set to camp for power and water. I'm gonna walk you around the rest of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. We will talk about dumping the black tanks and the black tank flushes when we leave the campsite. Um, up here, you've got this big long spray port hose connects to that. Here's where your cables will hook up. This is in case you want to open up slides by themselves. You would just turn this to the opposite way to turn it to the right to lock it in. Um, it's just turn it on, on and off your hydraulics. Your battery disconnect, fresh water connection. Here's all your winterizing water bypass information, which is already done here for you. Already winterized, you see the uh, antifreeze in your fresh water tank holder. This is where you put your filter and that's what you'll change it with. Again, our hot water heater, a couple things on that. This again, this will lift right up off here. If your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here to see if either one of these are bubbled up. They are a overheat reset button. If they are, simply just press them back in. There's on there to make sure it travels good. Come down to your campsite, you got your sewer outlet. But down there's your fresh water drain. Down here is where your back black tank is located, but that's your galley tank handle. Some storage here. Got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Again, your rear stabilizing jacks, your outdoor kitchen over here. Lighting. That's your galley. That back um, dump over there where it says galley tank, that is for that one. Your outdoor kitchen, sink. Access panel to the back of your fridge. That's a condensation hose. There's a uh, blue for your furnace. A few things on that. One when you run your furnace, steer clear if it does get hot. Make sure it's never blocked. And they make bug covers you can get on those. Got an outdoor fridge here. A vent, hood vent for your hood range inside. Previous owner put peep holes in so you can look out, see who's knocking at your door like that. This is, I'm not sure, cable holder, 110, a couple of outdoor speakers, access panel to electrical. Propane up here. Point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty lucid open, open, and green means you've got gas. Big storage with your spare tire up here. This is manual override. So you can reach in to override your um, hand crank for your slide up here. And then your battery post. Check them every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road. What covers everything out here? Let's go open up slides. Take a look at the inside. All right, coming up inside the unit. All the way to the right here and open up this panel door. And turn on these ceiling lights so you can see what's going on. All right, let's go ahead and open up these slides. Down here in the bottom, slide one. We're going to hit out. Looks like that is going to be our bedroom slide. If we can see that in the mirror opening up over there. And down here it says inspect both sides of your slide out room for interior and exterior obstructions prior to operating. That's a great idea. Um, in uh, your front slide up there as well as here what you're going to want to do is when you arrive look and make sure that all these doors are closed nothing's popped open like that going down the road especially those back ones slide control oh, that turns on and off 
Can you hold that out? Next one going out is our living room. Guess I didn't realize at first that it was a, all one. And here is your slide control on and off, and then you slide here. Both bedroom slides and living room slides going out. You hear the engine wind down? I'm gonna open this up so we can see our awning. On our awning, I'm gonna run that out. On your awnings, you're only ever gonna to wanna to run them out until you can see your flap fall down. But this one's still wet from being washed. Let's see if we can get the flap to fall down here. You have a flap, there's your flap. Once that flap falls down, you can see that silver bar. That's as far as you wanna go. Um, if I was to hold that down, that would continue to run itself out and start to run itself up onto itself backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Only run it out as far as you need to. Run that back in. Tell you that slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, continuing here in the control panel. Up top here is where you can check your brand new battery. Fresh black and gray tanks fresh water buttons one i said to hold down when filling your potable water your water heater your water pump that's where you turn those on at your ceiling lights porch and step light your tank heaters that's to turn on a little 12 volt pad that's on your tank to keep them from overheat uh keep them from freezing in inclement weather again slide control turn on and off here's your slide and awning all the way down below that is going to be your breaker box and fuses quite a variety actually 20s 15s threes highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping down there is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector that's always running off your battery so keep that in mind you might want to use your battery disconnect if you're not using this oh Make sure that everyone that's camped with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Come around the corner here. Your fantastic vent. Turn that on auto. Actually crank that open down there in that big square. I hear it opening. Turn it on. It's cranking open. And turn it on. See that working. Come back here, just touch off, and that'll close everything back up. This is for your ceiling fan here. All right, so your thermostat. Crank your air up real quick. Get your AC going. There it goes. We'll shut your AC off. There's only three modes on this, cool, furnace, and off. Let's see, I'm going back to off real quick. AC shuts off quickly. Now I'm going to go to furnace. You'll notice. Furnace kicks on. You hear that running, especially at the return. Just blow your fridge. Now when I shut that furnace off, you will notice that it takes a few minutes for it to cycle through before it actually shuts off. Plumbing to maintain, keep an eye on your plumbing up underneath your sink. There are all of your keys. Self-explanatory microwave. So that working. Light and fan of your cooktop. Map the top here, let's get backsplash. Turn that to light, hit your burner. All three of them are like the same way. Now, when you first turn on your gas, you may have to bleed your lines for a second to get the gas into them. So keep an eye on them. Don't let too much gas build up. Same thing on here. Turn your oven to pilot light. Open this up. Make sure that, that lights it by sparking. Then just turn it to your desired temperature. Medic fridge. Real easy here. Turn that on up here. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you're unplugged, it'll switch to gas. Lift, push that there, switch to gas. 
Now, if that light comes on over here, starts flashing, check your gas. One through five, five being the coldest over here. Shut that off. Uh, again, return heat. Your tabletop will lift up off here. Pull out your legs, put your tabletop back on your wooden lips here. Goes all the way around, put your flat parts on top, gives you another sleeping quarters. Looks like you got heat and massage recliners, power recliner, heat, massage. Here's this cool entertainment center. Light in case you can't find a drink. Remote should be in there. I'll get to those in a minute. Show both sides of this working here. All right. TVs. Biggest thing on TVs when you arrive at campsites, go into your setup, run a digital channel scan to pick up your local channels. There are quite a few here. We're inside a building, so that all works there. Below that is your sound system. The Jensen series remote for that. I was just doing by hand. Three three speaker zones, indoors, outdoors, or the back here. All of them. AM, FM, auxiliary, DVD player. So really nice system here. Fireplace, not just for looks. I can make it brighter or dimmer. Biggest thing now is the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, crank up the electric heater on this. I feel it cranking already. And it'll get it toasty in here in no time. That might be a glass cover for something. Shut that off. Coming up the hallway into our bathroom. Lighting here, 110 with GFCI reset again. A little plumbing to maintain. Just keep an eye on things, especially if you travel a lot in this. Uh, another hand crank open. Power exhaust vent should be on off of that here. Up here, there's your opening. Another television back here with your own thermostat let's go to cool here real quick see try to crank that air on there you go go to off quickly that'll shut off on us smoke alarm here now it's going to furnace waiting on that we got one tens on both sides of the bed as well as storage under the bed another tv um i believe this is installed for just a second ac i don't know why i thought there'd be a furnace mode on there all right let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up i do want to check to see if you are prepped for a washer and dryer in here I do not see that set up. Emergency escape window here. All right, so leaving the campsite. I like to start by shutting off all of my lighting and working my way forward from in the unit. Again, in here in the bedroom. Make sure we've cleared everything in between our dresser and our bed for our slide to come in. Bathroom, closed our vent, made sure our bathroom door is snapped open for travel. That back in the corner, snap that to keep that from bouncing. Shut them lights off. And then what you can do is remember that you haven't even talked about the bunk room yet. Great idea to keep these drawers snapped closed for travel. Keeps them from bouncing open onto your uh, slide controls here. 
hydraulic bunk here, single jackknife bed here. This one will fold up. There's a uh, ladder to get up on the top bunk. Extra bathroom in here with controls for your gray and black tanks for back here. Another 110 with GFCI reset. Wait for your TV to come back on. Again, run the digital channel scan, pick up the local channels where you're at. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Put this remote up here with these. It should be safe. Again, I snap the door open. Shut off our lights. These are all individual lighting. This bed will actually fold up if you need it to. Storage there. A couple more lights here. Now go to my main control panel. Where it says ceiling lights, shut them off. Now I see any individual sets of lighting that I need to go through the unit and shut off. I don't know where those shut off at. I see this one here. Those must all come on at the main control panel. Doors and drawers. Walk through your unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna impede our slide from coming in. Slide room in, won't work because we have to put turn our slide room on. Slide room in. Run over hydraulics, we're gonna bring everything in again. Doors and drawers, just walk through the unit Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to stop those slides from coming in. See everything comes in really quickly. Sorry, it's bugging me. The lights over here on the slide shut off up here. Now we can come and control, shut off our ceiling lights and we're dark again. Exit our unit. Lift and turn this handle. Now you will want to go in there to check the level of your tanks as we're dumping. If we are out camping, dry camping, yeah, excuse me, let's start by going to the rear here and bringing up these stabilizing jacks. And hit track. And some are up. Come over to the front here and dump our freshwater drain. And head on home or to the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up them stabilizing jacks, and head on up to the dump station. Let the dump station park accordingly. Your dump's going to be right in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. You got a 10 foot hose, comes to your convenience pack. Arrive, hook that up. All right, so what you've got in this one here is you've got power dumped here. What you're going to do is you're going to open valve right there. That's going to open up your front valve or your uh, front bathroom. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the levels of your black tank. That shows empty or close to it. Come back out here, leave that valve open. Hook up the hose for the dump station to this front sewer tank valve and, and 
Let that hose run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of that black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that washout you put in there has drained and then close this one and then pull your black tank, your back black tank. That's gonna be your rear bathroom by your bunk area. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, check inside, leave that tank open and go to this black tank flush. Again, with that tank open, run that hose for a good five minutes, wash that rear black tank out, close that up, make sure all that washout's gone, then close this black tank. Now we're gonna pull this bath. It's gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. Then we're gonna pull this one. Again, cleaner waters. When those are empty, last one we're gonna pull, that's even if you've used your outdoor kitchen, is this galley tank back here. When that's done, when that last galley tank is empty, we're gonna take our sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it up inside your bumper here and head on home again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you guys enjoy this silverback for many years to come happy camping